So our topic today is the distance rank feature query. And those are basically two queries that already had a solution back in the days when these queries didn't exist, but it wasn't not an optimal solution. You might know the so-called function score query, which allows you to re-rank results based on a function. And that could have been a script, or it could also be based on proximity. The problem with this existing solution was always that you basically had to run the script against every search hit, and that was rather expensive and could mean your search results returned slower. Like a common use case for this was if you were searching for a hotel, you may be searching for a hotel near to the main station, but you're still interested in all the others, so you don't want to filter things. Or if you're running a news-based site, you're usually interested in articles that are returned first based on recency so that newer articles always get a bump compared to older articles. And this was the kind of function score um, feature. The good thing is that, um, or the, the existing solution usually was to use a rescorer. So you only run the function score query against fewer of those documents of your total result set. Uh, but of course, that could mean that the ranking was not as you wanted it to be. In the recent uh, Elasticsearch major version, uh, Elasticsearch 7 and Lucene Major version 8, there was a new optimization. Uh, it's called the Block Max Weekend, uh, where basically when you run a search and you're not interested in exact counts, the query kind of optimizes itself and drops terms it searches for when they don't have enough score to be eligible to be in the top end, like the top 10. Uh, and this makes the queries a lot faster, like up to 30 times in some edge cases. Um, and with this optimization in place, we basically can take a look at the distance feature and the rank feature um, queries. So this is a this is the data set I use. It's pretty simple. I have a location and the last book date. I didn't contain any more hotel or location data just to keep the example small. Uh, I basically have three different documents uh, that I index. All of those are hotels or motels in Munich, and the map. Uh, you can see that they are basically um, scattered across the city. This is the first one, the motor one in central. So this is the main station. This is kind of the pedestrian uh, part of Munich or the most touristy part, if you want. Uh, this is a little bit outside in a suburb called Schwabing, and this one is on the on the west side of things. Um, so those are the three hotels that I basically have indexed. So what we usually do, we could figure out that we indeed have three hotels. We could search for motel and also get back three results because every um, document contains hotel. And what you usually do is you may want to score low budget hotels higher, right? You can run for motel. You can have a should clause, which boosts or scores, uh, increases the score if a document matches this. But the problem with this is that it always matches less than three stars. It doesn't matter if it's three, one, or two. Maybe you're still more interested in three star than in one star hotels in and around Munich. We will get back to this example later and how this fixed. We will start with a distance feature query. So what we're going to do here is we have this location, uh, which kind of resembles the main station. If we zoom a little bit in, uh, the main station is right here. So this is obviously our probably our best choice. So if I run this, you see that the Motel 1 Munich Sonnenstraße, which is the central one, is indeed the one which is returned first with the highest score. Then we have the Ibis Motel, and then we have the Motel 1. Because all of them pretty much match Motel, there's not much score difference in the regular query, and all of the scoring difference basically comes from the should clause, where we say, I want to score everything around the main station uh, with a pivot, which means the score drops by 50% unless the distance to the main station is, or when the distance to the main station is more than one kilometer. And it kind of makes sense if we take a look when here in the main station that those and those are scored higher than the one which is a little bit more north. So the next thing that we could do is we want to go to Olympia Park and look for hotels there. Uh, back then, when concerts were still a thing, there's the Olympic Stadium, which fits, I think, 60 or 70K people. So there used to be a lot of concerts. So you may want to search for a hotel nearby. Uh, the Olympia Park is pretty much up here. This is a stadium. Um, and over here at the top is the BMW World. 
uh, which also means that probably the next hotel would be the one in Schwabing. So if we run the search now, uh, you can see here the Motor One, Munich Park, Schwabing is the first one, the Sonnenstraße one is the second one, the Ibis Hotel Motel is the third one. Of course, like you could make this arbitrary complex and try to take subways into account, like how long does it take you to get there? But I think the first one is already quite a good hit here. The last thing is the airport location. So we take the airport location in here. Uh, again, we have a pivot, like a smaller score with one kilometer. And if you run this, you pretty much see that the scores of all of our hits being returned are rather low. The reason is that the airport is really far outside of the city. So if you scroll up, if you scroll up, you can see it up here. So it doesn't really matter with a uh, pivot of one kilometer around that location. This scores here will be just all rather slow. It's still that the, it's not even that the, the hotel up here is the next one, right? So the scores are really uh, low because we chose to be rather central around the airport location. Still, we display all of the hotels and that might be what you're really after, especially when you're booking something in intensive, uh, booking intensive times. So we could also run the distance feature for the last booking date. So um, instead of geo-based query, this is a numeric based query because the data is stored as a number. Uh, and we can see here the last booking date uh, was the uh, 2nd of March, the 1st of January and the uh, December. And th this one is actually getting scored higher. And that also makes sense because we said the origin is now. So basically the idea was show me like the most recent bookings and score them up. Maybe it's an indicator for a booking website. So how to boost by the rating is another question we can ask ourselves. And now we come to the rank feature query. So we will add the mapping because this is a dedicated type. The reason for this is uh, you basically need to score them in a special way in the inverted index, something that you don't want to do on runtime because otherwise you will be slow again. That's why it's a, a dedicated type. You can now see in the mapping that there's a rank feature type. And the last thing is to update all of those hotels. And now when we search for hope motel without anything, we see that the first two, two documents actually have the same score. Uh, main reason for that is uh, you basically have the same term frequency and also the same uh, inverse document frequency. So the scoring is pretty much the same. So what we could do now is we can basically run this query, say we want to do a rank feature by the rating. And you see that the Motel 1 is the first one, which has the highest rating. The Motel 1 in Schwabing is the second one. And the third one is the Ibis Munich West with the lowest rating. So the main question now is how does all of this get calculated? Um, and you may know this feature already, but I just want to make sure it also works for something like rank features. You can add an explain clause to your query, um, run this and see the calculation of the score for each part of the scoring formula. So the score here, for example, is for the motel search. You can see it is a value of 0, 013. And if we take a look at the second part, sorry, I closed most of it. Uh, if we take a look at this one, you see that this is the saturation function for the feature field for the rating feature. So with this example, you see here, this is a 5.0 rating uh, and the weight of the function and the default scoring uh, function. You can have different functions like uh, sigmoid, um, logarithmic, and something else. We take a look at the documentation in a second. And so you know how the calculation of this score actually came to be and why maybe one document is scored higher than the other. Yeah, just so to quickly wrap it up, we have the rank feature and the distance feature query. The rank feature query requires a custom mapping compared to the distance feature. Um, and the difference is basically whether you put in the point of reference from the outside like the airport in Munich, or if you want to compare those documents against each other. Both are optimized, so they skip non-competitive hits. And if you want to know more, we basically have this uh, blog post about that, what this happens and why this is so much faster. Uh, if you want to know more about the distance and rank feature query, I also have two links up here. I can put them up in the gist in a second. Um, and yeah, that's, a, that's about it for today.